Miss Grandmama Doris. We're up to chapter five in The Lemonade War. Very good book, very interesting read. We're gonna pick up at chapter five, Competition. Dinner that night at the Treskys was quiet, so the explosion that followed seemed especially loud. It was Jessie's turn to clear and scrape the dishes. Evan's turn to wash and stack. Evan looked at the pile of dirty dishes on his left. Jessie was ahead. She was always ahead when it was her turn to clear. But tonight it felt like she was taunting him. To Evan, every plate scrape sounded like, can't keep up, can't keep up. Evan was scrubbing the casserole pan when Jessie stacked the last dirty dish at his elbow. Then she stuck her hands in front of the faucet and rinsed without even saying excuse me. She shook her hands, practically right in Evan's face. So how much did you make, she said. That's it, he couldn't hold it in any longer. Why'd you do it, huh? Why'd you have to ruin the one thing I had going? For a second, as in Evan himself wasn't sure if he meant the lemonade stand or if he meant Megan Mortarity. In a mixed up way, he meant both. And there was no way he was going to tell Jesse that after paying back his mother for the four cans of lemonade, the one can of grape juice, and the bottle of ginger ale, she had been pretty irritated when she got home from work and there was nothing cold to drink in the house, that all he had left that he walked away with was $2.11. On top of that, he was pretty sure Scott had kept the $5 bill that they had earned. Well, he was, what was, was he supposed to do? Ask Scott to turn his pockets inside out? Evan hadn't kept track of the sales, so he wasn't sure. Why'd I do it? Why'd you do it? Why'd you invite that jerk over to the lemonade stand, shouted Jesse. And how come you wouldn't let me play? You're the one who is mean. You're such a show off, said Evan. You always have to let everyone know that you're the smart one. I wasn't showing off. I was just trying to have a little fun. Is that against the law? You want to do a lemonade stand with me? Then I don't want to do a lemonade stand with you. I'll do one with my friend Megan instead. You cannot be friends with her. You cannot be her friend, Evan shouted. Why not? Because you're a little kid and you don't even belong in the fourth grade. And because you're just an annoying little show off pest and no one likes you. The words felt like disgusting spiders running out of his mouth. They were horrible, but it felt so good to say them. Then Evan saw Jessie's lip tremble. Uh-oh, Jessie was a howler. She didn't cry very often, and she didn't cry very long, but when she did, it was loud. Mom would come down from her office. Evan would catch the blame. That's unfair. But Jessie didn't let loose and said she should have stood as tall as her runty little height would allow her. And she said, Megan likes me. She invited me to her house tomorrow. We're going to make another lemonade stand and earn twice as much as we did today. Oh, that was it. She was going to ruin everything. Show him up right in front of Megan, even before the school year had started. Make Megan think that he was one stupid loser who couldn't even beat out his baby sister at a lemonade stand. Evan was boiling over. I wouldn't count on it, Juicy, he said. Jesse hated that nickname, and Evan only used it when he had to. I'm going to have a lemonade stand every day until school starts, and I'm going to earn $100 by the end of the summer. Enough for an iPod. Oh, please, like you could if you even wanted to, said Jesse. Megan and I already have made 12 bucks each today. We could have $100 just like that, and Jesse snapped her fingers. And then what, said Evan? You'd look it up, you'd look, lock it up in your little lock box and save it until you're 50 years old. And you're the biggest miser I've ever seen on this planet. Jessie stiffened up. Her mouth made an O. But then she put out her hand on her hip and she smirked at Evan. For your information, I'm going to make a hundred dollar donation to a charity. Evan snorted. Yeah, right. What charity? 
There's been a long pause, and then Jessie said, as smooth as whipped cream, the Animal Rescue League. Megan and I talked about it today. You don't even like animals, said Evan. Everybody likes animals, shouted Jessie. And I'm going to give them a hundred dollars, so you can never, ever call me a miser again. I hope, I hope I never have to talk to you again, Evan shouted. Hey, a sharp voice came from the stairs. Miss Tresky had a pencil stuck in her, ha in her hair and a worried look on her face. I could hear you two all the way in the attic with the air conditioner on high. So what's up? Evan looked at Jessie. Jessie looked at Evan. They had taken a vow, a spit vow. Ever since Dad had gone, they had vowed not to fight in front of their mom. It made her sad. Sadder even than when their dad left. Nothing, said Evan. Nothing, said Jessie. Miss Tresky looked at the two of them. Come on, out with it. What are you two yelling about? It wasn't a fight, Mom, said Evan. We were just joking around. Yeah, said Jessie. We were goofing. Sorry we got you out of the office. Miss Tresky looked at both of them and in her laser eyes, Jessie hung the dish towel on the handle and fiddled with it until it was perfectly straight. Evan bent over the casserole pan and scrubbed as if his life depended on it. He scrubbed so hard his elbow bumped the fruit bowl. A cloud of little fruit flies rose into the air and then settled back down. Oh gosh, said Mrs. Trusty. Would you look at those fruit flies? Her shoulders slumped. All right, well, I'm going back up. Can you guys handle showers and, re and breathing? And then I'll be down to tuck you in and turn off the lights. Sure, Mom, said Jessie. No problem, said Evan. Miss Christie disappeared upstairs. Jessie turned Evan to the sink. Let me, let's make a bet, she said. Whoever earns a hundred dollars wins. And the loser has to give them all their winning. Evan shook his head. Not fair, he said. You are already got money saved up. That money doesn't count, said Jessie. You'll start with today's earnings, and that's all got to be from selling lemonade. No mowing lawns, no sweeping, and no garage cleaning, or anything else. Oh, what if neither one of us makes a hundred dollars, says Evan, not liking the sound of the deal. Then whoever makes the closest to a hundred dollars wins. And even if we both make over a hundred, whoever makes the most money wins the bet. When do we count up the money? asked Evan. Jessie thought about it. Saturday night, before the fireworks, she looked straight at Evan. Huh? What did you say? Evan didn't like bets. He really wasn't that into competition. He loved to play basketball and would always give it his all. But winning or losing, it didn't make much difference to him, as long as he got to play. But this, this was different. This mattered. If he didn't beat Jesse at this, if he couldn't win against his little sister in a lemonade war, then Evan thought of the school year stretching out in front of him. It was all over. He might as well just give up on everything right now. It's a bet, a hundred bucks by Saturday night, winner takes all. He shook his wet hands over the sink, dried them on the dish towel, and gave Jesse his most mincing look. You better pray for mercy. Chapter six, underselling. Jesse knew that Evan was up to something. First of all, there were all the phone calls last night, at least 10 of them. Then he'd come knocking on her door this morning, asking if she could have, if he could have the pieces of home core that she had leaned against her bedroom wall. No way, she answered. That's for my Labor Day display. Oh, give it up. Today's Thursday. The contest is on Monday. And you don't even have an idea, Evan said. I do too have an idea. I'm just not telling you. Jessie still didn't have a clue about her Labor Day project, so she wasn't going to give Evan the satisfaction of knowing that. 
Then how come you haven't done anything, Eddie said, pointing to the blank foam core and the bags of untouched art supplies. You're supposed to have pictures and typed up information and a big title. It's supposed to look like a school report. Jessie scrunched her eyes and pursed her lips. And in your such an idiot look, she said, don't worry. It's going to be great. And it's going to win the first prize. And anyway, Mom bought those supplies for me. And I am not giving anything to you. Jessie heard Evan mutter, Mister. Just as she slammed her fist, slammed the door in his face. And now three of Evan's friends were over, Paul, Jack, and Ryan. And all three had shown up with paper bags and all the bags in the garage making a lot of noise and with a big keep out sign taped to the door. Not that Jesse would have done gone in there anyway. Who cares what a bunch of boys were doing? But she wished Megan had invited her to come over for lunch or something instead. Jessie went to the kitchen and made a turkey sandwich. The boys had left the slimy mess of peanut butter, Doritos, and yes, sticky puddles of lemonade mix. Jessie quickly looked in the trash can under the sink. There were 12 empty cans of frozen lemonade mix. 12! That was 96 cups worth of lemonade. 96 possible sales. Holy cow! Where had Evan gotten the lemonade? He hadn't gone to the store, and he didn't have any money. Then Jesse remembered the paper bags that Paul, Ryan, and Jack had carried in. She bet the boys had all raided their freezer and brought over the stash. That didn't seem fair. She and Megan had to buy their lemonade today using the money they had made yesterday. How, how were they going to stay ahead of the game if the boys had free lemonade to sell? Think, Jessie, think, she whispered to herself. She could not let those boys win. By the time she finished her lunch and she cleaned up her mess, she wasn't going to lift a finger to clean up behind the boys and their mess. She had the beginning of a plan in her head, which is why she found it doubly confusing when she knocked on Megan's screen and Carly Bronin, Bronel came to the door. Jessie had been all ready to say, I've got a great idea. But then there was Carly, looking down at her like she was an earwig. Mmm, Megan home? asked Jessie. Carly didn't open the screen door. She just looked left and right behind Jessie. Where's Evan? Huh? said Jessie. Megan came down the stairs carrying a bottle of nail polish. Oh, hi, Jessie, she said, opening the door. She poked her head out and looked around. Where's Evan? He's at home. Why? asked Jessie. Carly made a noise like a snorting hippopotamus. I thought you said he was coming, said Megan. No, I didn't, said Jessie. You said it would be fun to make a lemonade stand, just the three of us. And I said, yeah, that would be fun. So didn't he want to, asked Megan. I never asked him, said Jessie. Oh, I thought you were going to, said Megan. Then you should have. Hey, Jesse, ask Evan if he wants to make a lemonade stand tomorrow. And I, and then I would have asked him. This was exactly what drove Jesse crazy about girls. They always said things halfway, and but then they expected you to just get the other half. And Jesse never got the other half. Carly gave Megan a look. Jesse wasn't positive what the look meant, but she was pretty sure and it wasn't a nice one. That was the other thing that Jessie hated about girls. They were always giving looks, looks that contained all kinds of strange, complicated messages. Last year in the second grade, there had been four girls who were always exchanging looks at one another. Becky Baker, Lorelei Stone, Andrea Hennessy, and Elaine Garrett. Jessie watched them and knew that Evan was right. They talked without words. They used their eyes to pass secret messages. So she also knew that they didn't like her, but only because Evan had finally explained that to her over the Christmas vacation. 
Jesse was surprised when he told her this. They laughed so much. How could they be that mean? They were the four who started a club, the Wild Hot Jelly Beans Club, or they called it. It was the WHJ Club. Becky was president, and she was always telling others what to do. They made signs and paper buttons and membership cards. The teacher, Miss Soren, didn't usually allow clubs in the classroom, but she made an exception, telling the girls, I'll let you wear your buttons in the class, but only if you let all the other kids join, if they want to. By the end of the day, every kid in the class was wearing a WHJ button, even Jesse who never belonged to a club before, ever. It had seemed like Becky was being so nice to her. That should have been her very first clue. Evan told her later, Becky made extra buttons for Jessie and even helped tape them all over her shirt. And she made a special membership card for her and even a WHJ sign that she helped Jessie glue to her, to her writer's workshop folder. Jessie remembered all the girls laughing, and Jessie laughing too. All those strange looks that Becky and Morelli and Andrea and Ellen kept flashing back and forth, like secret notes passed in class that Jessie could never read. The next day, Miss Soren collected all the buttons, gathered up all the membership cards, and even replaced Jessie's writer's workshop folder. No clubs in the classroom. She said, I made a bad choice by allowing it, even for a day. On the playground, Jessie went up to Becky. Why is she breaking up the club, she asked. Becky gave her a sour look. She had been grumpy all morning. Don't you get it, you dummy? WHJ doesn't stand for wild, hot jelly beans. We just said that to Miss Doreen. So we, so it sounds like we hate Jessie. It's the We Hate Jesse Club, and everyone in the class is a member. Jesse stared at Becky. Why do they hate her? What has she ever done to them? It didn't make any sense. And then Lori Ellie, Andrea, and Elaine had laughed, and even Becky had managed a smirky grin. Jerks, Evan said later. Then Jesse told him the whole story. We they've got rocks for brains. But Jess, you gotta be on the lookout for girls like that. Standing in Megan's front hall, Jessie stared at Carly. Something inside her told her that Carly was like that. Look, said Jessie, it doesn't matter. Evan can't come over, he's busy, and we've got to get going on our lemonade stand. I've got a really great idea. We don't want to do a lemonade stand, said Carly. Jessie looked at Megan. It's just that Megan fiddled with the bottles of nail polish in her hand the same way she had fiddled with the bracelets the day before. It's kind of hot, and we did the lemonade thing already, and now Carly's over. So, you know, you said you wanted to, said Jessie, and I thought you liked me, she added in her head. She felt her lower lip start to tremble. Not now, she shouted inside. Don't you be a big baby. Megan stood there, saying nothing, fiddling with the bottles. Then she turned to Carly. Oh, come on, Carly. It'll be fun. We made a ton of money yesterday, and it's really fun. Carly closed her arms, tightened her lips, and raised her eyebrow. It was amazing how high that eyebrow could raise. Jessie had never seen an eyebrow go that high. Oh, come on, Carly, Megan said again. Carly didn't move a muscle. Well, I guess... Megan's voice trailed off, and she clicked a bottle of nail polish again, one against the other that made a tapping sound that filled the silence. I guess me and Jessie will do the lemonade stand long then. Carly dropped her eyebrow and her arms. Whatever, she said as she walked out the door. Spend the day babysitting if you want to. The screen door slammed, followed by a huge bucket full of silence. Whatever, said Megan imitating Carly's voice. Jessie laughed, even though she was still stinging from the babysitting remark. Thanks for doing the lemonade stand with me, she said. Are you kidding, said Megan? 
She's such a stuck-up jerk. I didn't even invite her over. She just rode by. And when I said that you and Evan might be coming over, she just walked into the house. Are all the girls in fourth grade like her? Asked Jessie. She turned to the sound casual. Some are, some aren't, said Megan. She sat down to the, on the stairs and opened a bottle of sky blue nail polish. With quick, expert strokes, she started painting her toenail. Hey, that's right, you're gonna be in our class this year. That's so weird, jumping a grade. A lot of people skip a grade, said Jessie. Really, I never met one before. Do your toes green and we'll be coordinated. Jessie ended up getting more polish on her toes than on her toenails. By the time they were done, Jessie had explained to her the plan for the day. Value added. See, she said, pulling tea and bright ideas light up for sales from her pocket over her shorts. She turned to bright idea number two and pointed to it with her finger. That means we give customers something extra. They didn't expect, explained Jessie. I mean, anyone can go home and mix up their own batch of lemonade, right? So if you want them to buy from us, we have to give them something extra. I added value. Great, said Megan. What are we going to add? Well, how about chips? Maybe pretzels? Everyone likes chips and pretzels. We'll have to have a bowl on the table and everyone who buys lemonade can get some free snacks. So we're adding value, snacks. Yeah, except Jessie had stayed up late that night reading from her mom's booklet. You know what we're really adding? Fun. That's the one thing that people can't get all by themselves. It looks like we're gonna sell lemonade and snacks, but we're really selling fun. And everyone wants fun. Wow, said Megan, that's really smart. I'll be, it'll be like a party. Who doesn't like a party? Jessie nodded her head. She carefully tore out the definition of value added from the booklet and put it on her lunchbox. Her mother always said, some ideas are like money in the bank. An hour later, they're all set up. The lemonade stand was newly decorated with streamers and balloons, three bowls of snacks, Cheetos, potato chips, and pretzels were all set up on top. Jessie had lugged Megan's boombox all the way downstairs, and Megan was doing the DJ thing with her CD collection. It looked like a party, and somehow sprung right up in the middle of the hot concrete sidewalk. To everyone passed by, the lemonade stand shouted, Come out. Come on over. This is where the fun is. As soon as the music had come on, customers started drifting over. One of the moms across the street set up a sprinkler in her front yard. And soon all the kids in the neighborhood were running through the sprinkler and grabbing handfuls of Cheetos. Two women walked their dogs and stopped by for a nibble and ended up staying for about an hour. And a three or four of the neighborhood mothers set up lawn chairs nearby and talked and ate pretzels while their kids ran through the water. But Jessie noticed a funny thing. Even though there was endless buzz and activity all around the stand and the chips were flying out of the bowls, faster than Megan could restock them. They weren't selling much lemonade. Hey, Jordan, said Jessie, as a four-year-old boy who ran by in a bathing suit. Do you want a cup of lemonade? Jordan dive-bombed the pretzel bowl and came up with a fistful. I had too much already, four glasses, and then he ran off. Four glasses, said Jessie and Megan. He didn't buy any. Mrs. Dorian, don't you want to buy a cup of lemonade? Sorry, Jesse, I had to pass, said Mrs. Dorian. I already had I already had two already. And I'm going to cut the grass. Where's everybody drinking so much lemonade? wondered Jessie. She looked down the road. Oh, wait a minute. Megan, hold down the fort, said Jessie. I'll be back. Sure thing, said Megan, dancing to the music. This lemonade stand was the greatest idea. It looks like a birthday for the whole neighborhood. Jessie headed down the road, and as soon as she rounded the bend, she prepared for the worst. Evans lemonade stand had crowded with customers, but there was nothing, absolutely nothing. The corner was deserted. She crossed the street and went into the garage. There was the cooler, dirty and empty, and there were stacked plastic chairs 
four of them this time. And they were, wait a minute, those were new signs. Jesse pulled out the three large pieces of foam core, and on the back of each one was part of this penguin project Evan had done the last year in third grade. On the fourth front of the letters, the signs in big letters, slow down, cheapest lemonade in town ahead. Yesterday's prices, today's lemonade. You won't believe your eyes, icy cold lemonade, the signs said. Jessie couldn't believe her eyes. 10 cents a cup, that was crazy. Even if they sold all 96 cups, they would only make $9.60, and they would have to split that four ways. That was $2.40 for each boy. Evan was never going to earn hundred dollars that way, not with that kind of profit. Jesse went down into the basement. Evan and Paul were packing the air hockey, playing air hockey. The puck flew into Evan's goal and Paul threw his arms into the air in a victory V. Oh, snap, said Evan, we're winning. Winning? Winning? You're kidding me, said Paul. Then he dropped his voice with a gravelly growl and said, I don't play to win. I play to pulverize. Just like that muscle guy actor in Agent Dawn, the movie that all the boys were talking about, Paul was even flexing his muscles like the actor, except Paul didn't have any muscles, at least none that Jesse could see. When Paul saw Jesse, he dropped his arms. Hey, he said. Paul was Jesse's favorite one of Evan's friends. He always joked around with her, but in a nice way. And he never minded when Evan invited her to come along with them. Hey, said Jesse, what's up? Evan turned off the air hockey table. Nothing, he said. We're just going out. Paul dropped his hockey paddle onto the table and followed Evan into the garage. Jesse trailed behind. Where are you going, she asked. Down to the tracks, said Paul as he strapped on his bike helmet. We put pennies there yesterday, there this morning, and we're going now to get them. Squash, wanna? Yo, shouted Ellen. My bee, muttered Paul. So see ya, he said to Jesse. Jesse hated this feeling of being left out, like she wasn't wanted. Evan had never made her feel that way before. Even when sometimes he did want to, he just with his friends. He'd always say things like, Jess, we're going to shoot hoops, just the two of us. But when we come back, we'll play, we'll play with you. So that she knew that they still liked her, even when she wasn't invited along. But this, this was like they hated her, like he never wanted to play with her again. And Paul was going right along with it. Jesse scrowled. So you really cleaned up today at the lemonade stand, huh? She said. Yep, we sold out, said Ellen. So what'd you make? Like three dollars, she asked. Actually, we made a ton. What was it, Paul? Like 45 bucks, said Paul. Jessie's mouth went slack. Forty-five dollars? There's no way, she said. Not a, with ten cents a cup for your lemonade. Oh, just like little kids paid that, said Evan. The grown-ups, they all gave us more. That's too cheap, they said, and they get such a hot day and you're working so hard. Here, take a dollar and keep the change. It was crazy, he said. Unreal, said Paul. They kept pushing all the money at us. Cause they thought that we, it was so hot and we sweat and we were selling lemonade for a dime. We made a killing. Right idea number five, Jessie remembered. She remembered it immediately. It's called Goodwill. She said slowly, turning to the pa exact page in her mother's booklet with the definition on it. It's when you do something nice in business and it ends up paying you back with money, she sighed. Why hadn't she thought of that? She would be sure to tear out that definition and put it in her lump, in her lockbox when she got back to the lemonade stand. Well, whatever, we cleaned up, said Evan. Even so, said Jessie, trying to find some way to prove that Evan had not had a good day selling lemonade. You had four people working the stand. 
So if you split the $45 four ways, that's only $11.25 for each, which is still way more than I'm going to make today, she thought, since the whole neighborhood had already filled up on cheap lemonade. We're not splitting, said Evan. The guy said I could keep it all. Right, said Paul. It's all for a good cause. That's not fair, said Jesse. It sure is, said Evan as he got on his bike and pushed off. In case you didn't know, that's what it's like when you have friends. Evan crossed the street. Ouch, said Paul. He followed Evan. Jesse was left standing alone in the driveway. Thank you.